Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In today's video, we are going to extend what we have already done in the previous video. In the previous video, we modeled a simple pendulum that was hanging through a massless rod and was swinging because we gave some initial energy to it or initial angle to it. And we also saw that if we implement some damping forces or some energy loss element, then the pendulum will eventually come to rest. In today's video, I am going to attach the simple pendulum with a cart that can move along the horizontal direction. And we will see that it will become a coupled dynamic system. This means that if one of the part, whether the cart or the pendulum moves, then its movement will affect the other one. And both are going to move. We are going to give some initial angle to the pendulum and we'll see that how the cart reacts. We are also going to figure out the energies of the whole system. So over here, you can see that I have written the differential equations of this system. And the differential equations are quite complex. We have seen in the previous video that we can model this system using differential equations. We can model this thing using Simscape Foundation Library. And we can also model this thing using multi-body components. In today's video, I am just going to focus on multi-body components. So we will not be concerned about the differential equations, which seems quite difficult. And we are only going to model the system through multi-body components. And then we are going to implement a MATLAB function that will calculate and give us the energies, the kinetic energy, potential energy, and the total energy of the system. And one more thing before I get started is that I'm going to model this pendulum once again, although I have done it in the previous video, but in the previous video, we saw many other things. So just for a recap, I'll model this pendulum once again. So in addition to the cart, the pendulum will also be covered over here. So I'm going to start with the cart. And for that, the very first thing we need is a world frame because we already know that world frame is the most important thing for any Simscape model. So the very first thing is the world frame. Then we need a mechanism configuration block and we need a solver configuration block as well. So quickly, I'm going to attach these three things together. I've already covered it that what are these three things and why I'm doing this. So before moving on, I can define all my variables in the model. So for that, I'm going into modeling tab and then in model explorer. And under here, I have this model workspace. In the model workspace, I need one variable for gravity. So I'm defining G and its value will be 9.81. Then I need capital M, which will represent the mass of the cart. It is going to be one kg for this time. Then small m, it is going to represent the mass of the pendulum bob. And in the previous video, we used 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So I'm going to use it once again as 0.2. And for the length of the pendulum, I'm going to use small l. It was in the previous video 0.5. So I'm going to use 0.5 again. I guess that's it. I don't need any other variables. So if I'll need, I'll define them later on. So these are all my things which I'm going to use over here. And in the mechanism configuration, I can define the gravity instead of this default value as g. So it represents what I have used over here. Okay, now the very first thing is I need to attach the cart. But that cart is going to be attached with prismatic joint. Prismatic joint can translate in its z direction. Currently, the world frame z direction is going upwards, but I want my cart to, to slide along the horizontal. So I need to make sure that z axis is pointing towards right. So to make the z axis, which is shown over here, this is the world frame which I have shown. So for the world frame, currently z axis is going upwards. I need to make it go towards right. So I can rotate by 90 degrees about y axis. I need a rigid transform. And for rotation, I'm going to use standard axis, positive y axis, and 90 degrees. So this will rotate the z axis towards right, and x axis will now be going downwards. Over here, I can attach a prismatic joint so that whenever it actuates, it moves along its z axis, which is towards right now. So with this prismatic joint, I need to attach the part. And for cart, I'm going to use a brick solid. So this brick solid will have dimensions of 0.2 in x and z axis or in x z plane, whereas it can be maybe 0 0.05 or something like that in the y direction that will represent its thickness. So I'm going to set 0 0.02 over here, a small thickness, maybe 0 0.05 and 0.2 once again over here. Let me update it. So this is the part which I have made. Okay, I can change its inertia and I want to declare it as a point mass and its mass will be capital M which we have already defined. 
and for graphics i can make its color something like this which i have shown in the figure okay so this is our card that can slide along the horizontal axis i have attached that card i can name this block as now for the next thing i need to attach the pendulum with it but to attach the pendulum the very first thing is i need to attach the revolute joint first and then with the revolute joint the pendulum will be attached for revolute joint the z axis should be coming towards you that is towards the screen so that the pendulum can swing in the x z plane which is shown right now to make sure that the z axis is coming towards the screen i have to rotate the frame once again currently remember that z axis is going towards right if i can rotate about x axis by 90 degrees the z axis is going to come out of the plane of this screen so i'm going to use this rigid transform once again over here and this time i'm going to choose x axis and it will rotate by 90 degrees and z axis will come up over here now i can attach a revolute joint and once the revolute joint is attached with it i need to attach the massless rod but i need to move downwards i have covered these things in the previous video so if you uh, if you think that i'm going a bit quickly you can consult the previous video where i have explained in detail that how we can model a simple pendulum in multibody so from the joint i need to move l by two units downwards and right now the x-axis is pointing downwards so i have to move downwards in x-axis by l by two so over here in this rigid transform i'm stopping this rotation and for translation i'm choosing standard axis x-axis and it is going to be l by two okay so now i can attach the solid over here that will represent the massless rod i can insert the brick solid and for it the dimensions are going to be l units in x axis because the x axis is pointing downwards i want the rod to be elongated in x axis and some small number in y and z let it be 0.005 and to make it massless i'm going to go over here i'm going to go into the inertia point mass and then a zero over here and let me change its graphics as well okay so this is the rod which we have modeled i can apply and okay so i can type in rod over here and now i need to attach the pendulum bob for that i need to move from the center of the rod till the last end so i can use this rigid transform once again because it will take me further l by two units downwards and over here i can attach the pendulum bob okay the last thing which we need to attach is the bob and it is going to be a spherical solid uh, i have attached it over here and for its dimensions uh, i can have 0 0.025 maybe the dimension is not going to affect anything it is only going to change the visual field the major thing is the inertia so i'm going to convert it into point mass and the inertia mass will be small m which we have already defined for uh, graphics let me change its let's change its color to purple and we can see that we have created this kind of code okay now i can run it i've run it for four seconds only and see okay so this is the view of the pendulum and the card Currently, we haven't given any initial angle to the system, so everything feels stationary. We will give the initial angle and we'll see that how this system moves. But before that, we need to implement the energies. So I'm going to go back over here. And for energies, you can see the equations are given over here. We need to make a MATLAB function. So for that, here is the MATLAB function block. And for it, I'm going to edit the symbols. Okay, so the very first input is if i go over here the inputs are x dot square which is written over here this is the card's velocity then i have phi dot square this is the pendulum's angular velocity once again i have x dot phi dot and phi so for so to calculate the kinetic energy i need the card's velocity the angular velocity of the pendulum and the angle of the pendulum so these are the three inputs and for potential energy i only need the angle of the pendulum so these are the three inputs that my function file should have so i can go back in for the first input i'm going to name it as x dot 
I've added two more and then I'll have five dot and the third input will be five. And for the output, I'll have three outputs. The kinetic energy, I'm labeling it as TE. The potential energy, UE, and the total energy is capital E. So these three things are the output data. I'm converting it to the output data. After that, I need some parameters from the model as well. And those parameters will be uh, G, L, capital M, and small m. So these are all the variables which I've defined. So these are not the inputs, these are parameters. So I'm converting these things into parameter. Uh, I guess we are good to go now, and I can type in the equations over here. So the very first equation was for the kinetic energy, and it was, uh, I can't remember it. Let's go back and see. So it's half m plus m x dot square. I can type in half into capital M plus small m into x dot square. After this, the next term is half ml square phi dot square. Okay, so once again, half m l square into, let me have a round bracket over here, into phi dot square. And the last term is ml x dot phi dot cos of phi. So it is ml x dot phi dot and cos of phi. And for tension energy, the equation is m into g into l into 1 minus cos of phi. And for total energy, I'm just going to add these two energies up. Okay, just let me make sure that I've typed the correct equations. Yes, I have done that. Okay, so this is the function block that will give me the energies. I can name it as maybe energies. And this function requires three things, x dot, phi dot, and phi. So I'll get x dot from here. Whatever is the velocity of this prismatic joint, that will be the velocity of the car. So I'm going to go into the prismatic joint and from sensing, I'm going to turn on the velocity. Now I have the velocity port. I can use a PS to simulate converter. And I have done that. Okay, now the other two things, phi and phi dot, for that, whatever is the angle of this revolute joint and the angular velocity of this revolute joint, those things will be phi and phi dot. I can go in over here and from sensing, I turn on position and velocity. I have these two things now. I need this converter once again over here and over here. And so I can attach phi dot over here and phi over here. So I have attached all the things. I'm just going to terminate these because I'll use data inspector to view all these signals. And I'm going to label these signals as T underscore E, this one as U underscore E, and the last one as E. Furthermore, I'm going to log these signals so that I can view them in data inspector. Apart from this, I need to view the angle of the pendulum in the data inspector. It is over here. I've turned it on and I can label it as phi. And the other thing I need is the position of the part as well. So I need to go back and turn on the position. Uh, I have to connect this V over here. And once again, I'm going to terminate this position like this. I can label it as X and log it as well. So dear learners, I hope everything is fine now and we are ready to view this thing and see the system in action. So just let me run it without giving an initial angle to the pendulum and, and set everything over here in the data inspector. So in the data inspector, uh, I'm going to view in the top plane, I'm going to view the guard's position and the pendulum's angle, phi. And in the bottom, I'm going to see the kinetic energy, potential energy, and the total energy. So right now, everything is zero. Over here, everything is zero. 
you can see that this thing is going up but over here in the y-axis you can see the scale it is terrorist from minus 15 so it is practically zero okay so uh, uh what further i can do is i can change the width of these lines so that these lines are a bit more visible i'm expecting that because there is no energy loss elements modeled right now so whatever initial angle i'll give to the pendulum the pendulum will keep on oscillating uh, with that angle but that angle will have some coupled effect to the cart and the cart will oscillate as well and the whole system will keep on oscillating with a constant total energy whereas the potential and the kinetic energy they are going to oscillate okay so everything is set now and we are ready to give some initial angle to our pendulum so over here this is the revolute joint i can give the initial angle in this state target i'm going to specify the position target and the initial angle can be maybe 20 degrees only and now let's run it over here in the animation you can see that i can click on it you can see that it is the pendulum is oscillating and because of the oscillation of the pendulum the part is moving as well and as it is an ideal system with no damping it will keep on doing this for eternity and if we go in the data inspector let's see what is happening over there so you can see that in the data inspector the pendulum is oscillating this purple line is phi it is oscillating constantly and because of this oscillation the part is also oscillating and for energies you can see the total energy which is this yellow line is constant whereas the kinetic energy at the very start it is zero and we have displaced the pendulum to a particular angle so it will have some potential energy which is over here and this potential energy converts into kinetic energy of the system and the potential energy drops to zero whereas the kinetic energy increases to its maximum and the things keep on oscillating like this currently the graphs look a bit choppy so what I can do is I can go into the modeling in model settings. I can convert the maximum step size to 0 0.001 so that things become a bit smoother. I can run it again. And the data inspector. Now we'll see that these things are a bit smoother. And over here, the pendulum is also oscillating like this. So dear learners, I hope you have understood that how we can model this uh, pendulum attached to a cart system and we have seen it in action. We were not concerned about what are the difficult differential equations behind the system. We have only modeled it using multi-body components. In the next video, we are going to attach a controller with this system so that we can control the angle of the pendulum. And we want this pendulum to be to behave like an inverted pendulum. So it should stand upright at an angle of Pi radians or 180 degrees. For that, we need a controller that can take in the feedback of the current angle of the pendulum and try to move the cart in such a way that the pendulum maintain its angle at pi radians or 180 degrees. That will be the topic of the next video. So till then, take care and goodbye.